Good morning. In the true story of Elijah on Mount Carmel from 1 Kings 18, there are at least three things from this passage that some have found challenging, and I'd like us to consider them this morning. First, why did God let a wicked man become the king of his chosen people? And why did he allow the king to marry a wicked woman who eventually started killing his prophets? And why did God allow her to do that and his prophets to die when they were being faithful? In other words, why does God allow evil people to have their way and God's people to suffer loss in this life? Why doesn't God just stop them and stop the evil? That's a great question. Well, one day he will. Remember that. In the end, evil does not prevail. Death does not continue. Sin does not remain. In the new heaven and earth, there will be no more sin, suffering, sorrow, death, as we learn from Revelation 21. Jesus will return to judge every person and every evil spirit in this world. And after their guilt is confirmed with evidence, he will banish them into the lake of fire to be punished forever, separated from him and his holy heaven and his holy people. Until that time, God is sovereignly, meaning he's still in control, he's allowing evil to exist and to be expressed. We all wish it wasn't so. Uh, but then when we do or say something evil, do you wish God would silence you? Evil is here in this fallen world, and it will remain until the end of time. It will, to some measure, remain a mystery as to why God doesn't just stop it all and end it all now. So we pray for wisdom to know how to live in an evil world filled with evil people and evil spirits. Ultimately, it is our faith, our trust of God, even when we don't understand, that carries us through until it's all perfectly resolved. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Second, why does the prophet Elijah mock the false prophets when they are crying out to their god Baal? We read in verse 27, at noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is a god, meaning he is real, right? Isn't that what you believe? Elijah says, Either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. Why would he say those things? Well, there are several good reasons that are offered. Here's one that I believe. It's what they had said about the one true God. I mean, Israel was God's chosen people. And since so, why was there a drought? Was God busy uh, relieving himself on a journey or asleep? Why didn't he send rain? Well, we know why he didn't. The prophets told the people the drought was a judgment against them for their sinful idolatry, uh, designed to get their attention and lead them to repentance. But the king and his people didn't want to hear it and the false prophets chimed in with their mockery. So Elijah is chiming in with like mockery. And when God displays his presence and power, he will prove that he wasn't busy or relieving himself or on a journey or asleep. He was there. Third, after God reveals himself and sends fire to consume the sacrifice, it is the people who cry out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. But notice, the false prophets do not speak up. Even after that, they still do not believe. So Elijah judges and condemns them to death as false prophets. It is what God's law required of those who mislead his people. Yeah, God does not take lightly to those who promote false gods and lead people away from him. They will be judged. At the judgment, definitely so. And in this life, sometimes, as in that instance. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 18. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, 
It would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world for the causes of sin. These stumbling blocks must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. So don't ever do anything that would lead someone astray, away from God, into sin, into deception and false religions. Whoever does so will answer to God for what they've done. Today, we lead people toward God. We point to Jesus, the gospel, the truth, life, light, God's love. Let's be faithful to do that. Let's pray. Lord, forgive us when we sin and forgive us for any ways that we have ever led someone astray away from you and the truth. Today, use us to lead people to you. We pray. Now, you continue. God bless you.